Erica Reels from the largest terrorist attack in U.S. history. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tiffany Stewart. And good evening, everyone. I'm David Foster. We're breaking away from continuous NBC coverage to bring you up to date on how this tragedy is affecting us here in North Central West Virginia. We will rejoin the NBC network in just about 30 minutes. Shockwaves are being felt around the country and here in West Virginia as people react to a national tragedy. It all began shortly before 9 o'clock this morning. A hijacked American Airlines plane crashed into a World Trade Center tower in Manhattan. Just minutes later, another plane rammed into the second tower. Within the hour, the World Trade Center collapses. Meanwhile, a third airplane crashes near the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. And closer to home, a United Airlines jet crashes in Somerset County, Pennsylvania after being hijacked. What followed are evacuations and closings around the nation. Here in North Central West Virginia, emergency crews rush into action, first securing local airports. Team 12's Aru Pandey was at Benedict Airport this morning. She is live there now with the latest. Aru, what safety precautions are in place? Well, David, just under an hour after news of the first attack, local officials placed the airport in a lockdown. People were asked to leave as police began securing the building. As the Federal Aviation Administration shuts down all airline takeoffs nationwide, passengers here in Bridgeport are sent home. I think they're doing the right thing because I can always go back over and stay here until it's over. And I think it's, it's sad. This didn't think it ever happened over here. This as a United Express airliner carrying 26 passengers is diverted to the airport. The plane was on its way to Washington, D.C. from Indianapolis. Said that there were uh, terrorist planes that attacked New York and uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, and I, he said there's a fire in the Capitol building and that everything's been evacuated and all airports have been shut down. United passengers found themselves not knowing where they were and what exactly had happened. You know, it's pretty serious if they take all the planes out of the sky because that really messes up, messes up the system. But we'll be all right. At least we're safe on the ground. Passengers were asked to leave the aircraft without belongings and were later shuttled to nearby hotels. Inside the airport, Bridgeport police use a canine unit to make sure everyone is out. We've placed ourselves in a, sec uh, a security two uh, phase, which means that we are aware that there has been something that has occurred uh, in the United States. Nothing has occurred at this airport and uh, we're taking precautions. Local police secure grounds while airport officials wait for additional diverted planes and instructions from the FAA. Again, the airport lockdown was a local security measure taken as a precaution. In line with FAA orders, no planes have taken off here from the Benetton Airport. Some people have rented cars to get to their final destinations. Aru, any idea if more planes have been to, uh, diverted to the airport? Well, David, as far as we know, the United Express plane was the only one to be diverted and land here in Harrison County. Reporting live from Bridgeport, I'm Aru Pandey, 1412 News. Okay, thank you very much, Aru, for that report. There were some scary moments near Pennsylvania Airport this morning as a large plane crashed about 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh near Jennerstown. Team 12's Elaine Tampoy has been on the scene since early this afternoon. She joins us live now from Somerset County, Pennsylvania. Elaine, what happened up there today? David, around 10 o'clock this morning, a passenger on United Flight 93 called 911 in Westmoreland County, Pennsylvania, saying the 757 airplane was being hijacked. 911 says they then heard an explosion in the background when they lost all contact with the passenger. The plane crashed approximately 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh in Stony Creek Township in Somerset County. There were approximately 38 passengers and seven crew members on board at the time. Police have declared the crash site a crime scene, so the five-mile radius around the site is now tightly secured. So basically, basically, all we can see right now is the ditch where the plane first landed and then some burnt trees in the far distance about a mile away. Investigators are worried about the hazardous materials from the plane, but don't want to disrupt any of the evidence. Right now, we're waiting for Governor Tom Rich to come in with his comments. Stay tuned to Team 12 News. We'll keep you updated as this story develops. Reporting live in Somerset County, Pennsylvania, I'm Elaine Tampoya for Team 12 News. Okay, thank you very much, Elaine, for that report. Tiffany? Millions of Americans watched as tragic events like the Somerset crash unfolded on television today. Team 12's Aru Pante joins us live again from Bridgeport. Aru, how are local residents reacting to these attacks? Well, Tiffany, feelings of disbelief, shock, and sadness overcame many of the people I spoke with today. Just minutes after the first attack, people at one local business simply couldn't believe what they were seeing. 
Employees of Harry Green in Clarksburg gather around a television watching as America comes under attack. In this terrible incident. I don't know. There's a lot of sick people in this world, I guess. Many couldn't imagine how an otherwise ordinary day could turn into such tragedy. They're on their way in the office, have a nice day at work, waiting for their coffee break. Something like that happens. And, and you got no, you got no clue that it's coming. People called it devastating, unreal, as smoke billowed from the one standing World Trade Center. She said something happened to World Trade Center, and I said no. So I hung up from and came in here, seen that plane come into that building. I said, my God, you know. It. If it was foggy, that, if it was rainy, or or something like that, I. Could one of them accidentally hitting, but with two of them like that, that one's a broad daylight. I mean, just as plain as day. Little did these employees know, the crash was just the beginning of the devastation. Again, these employees were watching a little after 9 o'clock. This was before the towers came down. Reporting live in Bridgeport, I'm Aru Pandey, 1412 News. Okay, thank you very much, Aru, for that report. Well, watching today's events unfold, you had to wonder if anything could have been done to stop this attack on America. Emergency officials from around the area are answering that question with one word, nothing. The pictures out of New York were so shocking, even 911 operators were glued to the television. Most Americans never thought a scene like this one would be taking place in their backyard, but it has. Whether the attack took place in the nation's largest city or the smallest town, emergency officials say a terrorist attack of this magnitude could not have been prevented. It's just unbelievable. And, you know, that's how it strikes me. It's something that, you know, I saw it happen, but, you know, just, you know, to, to really try to fathom that it's very difficult and uh, and then you're, you're thinking of that uh, when the second plane hit there were uh, there were firefighters in the uh, the first tower you know uh, fighting that you know fire trying to get to it anyhow out of the realm of thinking and something that no one ever thought could become a reality based on the size of Tuesday's events the 911 director says it's obvious to him the terrorists only wanted one thing attention from around the world you have terrorists like that, they want to go for the people, they want to go for the masses. You know, New York City is simply a place to get that. You know, and the World Trade Center is a landmark in New York City. You know, if, you, if people that talk about New York City will mention the World Trade Center. So um, it's, it's the shock factor is what they want, and uh, unfortunately today they've gotten that. Rescue crews from across the Northeast have converged in New York City. Smart says he expects those emergency officials to be busy for days to come. Today's series of tragic events closed federal buildings nationwide. Clarksburg's downtown building shut down sometime before noon this morning. Security officials say the decision to send employees home came from the state office in Parkersburg, and employees couldn't agree more with the country's actions. Working, what was the mood like then? Well, we'd heard a lot of rumors, and they had heard a lot of rumors, and some of them had heard it on the uh, TV and radio, but uh, and some of them were starting to kind of get worried. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, you can understand that. I haven't really had time to, to think. Um, and I think, you know, that we're doing the right thing by evacuating most of the federal buildings, D.C. and New York area. Of course, security is being heightened around all federal buildings. When buildings reopen depends on what happens in the next 24 hours. Governor Bob Wise activated the state's emergency operations center in wake of the terrorist attack. Wise says America is at war and West Virginia will defend its freedom. State offices shut down, including the Health and Human Resources Regional Office in downtown Clarksburg. The DHHR had several clients waiting for help when they locked the doors during lunch. Clients say they fully understand the quick action. I'm terrified and in shock and immediately called my daughter who lives in Florida and uh, asked her not to fly. She had to uh, have a trip this afternoon and so she agreed not to but the FFA then shut everything down. There's no word yet on when state offices will reopen. Well, in Marion County, residents could not believe the devastation and its huge local impact. Team 12's Denise Alex was out in the community today. She's in the newsroom tonight. Denise, what are people in Fairmont saying about all this? David, overall, residents are devastated. Many told me today they're in shock and disbelief. Others who've been through war and terrorist attacks say they're just plain mad. All in all, in one way or another, this tragedy has touched everyone. 
I mean, you go to work early in the morning, you expect to have a good day, nice weather, having, you know, everything's fine, and then boom, tragedy strikes you and your family. At one local restaurant, all eyes were focused on today's devastation. I just can't believe the devastation. I mean, it, I hear things happening other places, but not here, not in the United States. This is supposed to be a safe country. Russell Yan checked on his daughter living in Washington, D.C., where a plane struck the Pentagon. And around the corner, local leaders took extra precautions. Just around 12 o'clock, Fairmont's mayor decided to shut down the city complex, sending home all employees. Not even 15 minutes later, Chief Circuit Judge Fred Fox did the same, sending home all the courthouse workers. I think anybody in any kind of government facility is, is, uh, is at least uh, uh, a potential victim to something like this happening even on a local, even on a local, le local level. While the city county complex was shut down, sheriff's deputies continued working, patrolling schools and streets, trying to ensure some sense of safety. Right now we just have to prepare for the unexpected. Uh, hopefully this is over, but uh, we don't know. Captain Marshall Parker was visibly shaken by the countless lives taken. It made me feel sick. He too kept his eye on the unfolding developments throughout the country. I think what we're seeing today is the terrorists have learned to use the United States and a free country against us. Whoever is responsible, whoever masterminded the attack, one thing is for certain, the pictures of this destruction will be forever etched in your mind. For the most part, schools across the state remained open, with educators believing keeping kids in the classroom was safer than having them go home early during the first hours of uncertainty. Reporting in the newsroom, I'm Denise Alex for Team 12 News. Okay, thank you very much, Denise. Well, there were some closings in Randolph County as well. Superintendent Glenn Carlin told Team 12 News that Elkins High School, Midland Elementary, and the Vocational School were evacuated this morning for precautionary reasons only. The three buildings are in close proximity to the Elkins Airport. A low-flying aircraft spent the day circling Elkins and concerning residents, but this afternoon state police reported that plane was for official use and would continue circling the area. All other Randolph County public schools remained open and classes continued as scheduled. With the terrorist attack hitting apparently close to home near Pittsburgh, Dominion Hope takes steps to make sure employees are safe. Employees at Dominion's central office in Pittsburgh were sent home shortly after that plane went down in Somerset County. Representatives say it was just a precaution. Locally, the gas company has a plan in place for terrorist attacks just like this one. As the utilities, nationwide, the utilities always have uh, security plans in place. And uh, we just go to an, another level in, in just of awareness. Uh, we've uh, secured all our facilities in through West Virginia, up through Pennsylvania, and uh, just more of aware of our surroundings. But I'm sure that everybody should be in a case like this. Representatives for Allegheny Power say they are also taking extra precautions tonight to make sure they're prepared in case another terrorist attack happens. Well, as some of you may or may not know, my family resides in the New York area, and many of them were able to witness firsthand some of the devastation on the island of Manhattan. Joining me right now on the phone from New York City is my future sister-in-law, Angie Walker, with her view of the damage. Angie, I have to ask you, when you were walking to work this morning, what did you see? Um, I saw a very low, large plane flying overhead, and my first thought was that it would never clear any of the buildings in lower Manhattan. And then a few seconds later, I saw a, a lot of smoke. Now, you and I were talking Manhattan. before, and you said that uh, at that point in time, it didn't seem like a real panic, right? It just kind of seemed like uh, an accident. I thought only at that time that possibly a plane had crashed in the bottom part of Manhattan. But by the time I got to work, um, the second plane had crashed into the Second World Trade Tower. Um, and at that time, we all speculated that this was terrorism. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what was kind of the reaction of uh, your co-workers? Was everyone pretty nervous with the events of the day? Everybody was nervous. Everybody was anxious. Um, after that moment, we kept hearing planes fly overhead, or what we thought were planes. Um, and then it turned out that those were military jets flying overhead, but it, it scared us all. Now, do you think people felt safe once they found out this was a, a terrorist act? Uh, no, no one. We still don't feel safe. We still are very nervous. Um, think, you know, enough time has, have, has gone by, though, that we're starting to feel a little more safe. And being home makes us feel safer. 
Now, I know that uh, you had to walk home tonight because a lot of the services are shut down. What did the streets of New York look like? Parking lots. Um, no cars were moving anywhere. Uh, they had the National Guard had come in and shut down a lot of the streets so ambulances could get by. Um, but for the most part, cars were just parked and people were out of their cars and walking. Um, there was a lot of people everywhere, but it was kind of quiet. There was no usual horns that you hear in Manhattan. Now, you and I were talking before, and you said that there's a, a pretty large cloud of dust over the city, right? Okay. Unfortunately, looks like we have lost Angie there, but uh, we certainly appreciate Angie for joining us, uh, giving her first-hand impression of some of the events that unfolded today in New York City. Well, today's tragedy was seen unfolding live on televisions across the country. It gripped the entire nation, and then every form of media went into overdrive. Here at the Clarksburg Exponent Telegram, newspaper presses roared into action with special editions. The newspaper first hit the streets with news of the attack at 11 a.m., and by 2 p.m., they had published three editions. Newsroom-wise, we've got about 25 people on staff, and I'd say about 23 of them are activated, and, and the other two will be getting here shortly because we've got to turn right around and, and get ready to put out the morning edition. Um, so we'll have everybody uh, all hands on deck, so to speak. Well, editors say the last time they printed this many editions was back in 1963 when President Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas. As the tragic news spread throughout the U.S., locally residents tried to grasp what they could from the media. Team 12's Patty Petit was in Upshur County where citizens looked for distant family and college students dealt openly with being away from home. Residents and students say the worst is not knowing, not knowing where friends and family are at this hour and not being given a reason for the loss our country and our families are facing. In Upshur County, Cindy Roby was frantically looking for answers. Her cousin reported to work at the World Trade Center. Do you have any idea what floor she worked on? And the miles separating loved ones seemed even further. Family is the priority in everyone's life and not to know at this point is very nerve-wracking. With college students from all 50 states and surrounding countries filling universities and colleges like West Virginia Wesleyan, you can't help but wonder how it's hitting home. Home being where some of these students can't get back to right now during a time of tragedy. These were the faces across campus. Classrooms without television sets moved to places where the media could be reached. Our towers now with the second collapse. And no matter where you were watching, there were eyes of disbelief. I'm really appalled. <laughs> I just really can't believe what I'm seeing. It's kind of like a bad movie. It's just a very cold-hearted act, and anyone who's responsible for that does not deserve any freedom whatsoever. So I just think it's <laughs> horrible, horrible. Being from New Jersey and having a lot of people that um, go into the city all the time, they, I, I know about two people that live in the city, right in Greenwich Village, um, right around the corner from this. It's, it's really scary. I've been watching the whole thing from the beginning, and um, there's nobody to call, so it, it stinks. For those students attending Wesleyan and who are far away from home, there is support. We're going to keep up with the, what's going on at the news and also getting lists of students who live in the residence halls from those areas, D.C., New York, New Jersey areas, so that the residence life staff, the student assistants and professional staff, and the counseling staff throughout the day can visit those areas and find out any students who have particular needs that we can respond to. Even though West Virginia is miles away from the attacks, Americans are feeling the stress and loss from east to west. Since we talked with Cindy Roby, we did find out her cousin and her family are safe in New York. One other person in Upshur County was breathing a sigh of relief today. Tammy Ronco spent this morning praying in Wesleyan's Chapel. Her father works at the World Trade Center, but when she called home, she found out he did not report to work today. Amongst all the confusion and chaos, uh, it's 40 minutes from my backyard, and my father didn't go to work this morning as planned because of uh, he figured he could do it from home. So I'm just very thankful, very grieving for all those that are lost, but very thankful for one family, but for my family to be safe. Although Tammy's family is safe, she says they lost many friends who worked at the World Trade Center. And she described the streets of New York City where she frequently walks will never be the same again. Reporting for Team 12 News, I'm Patty Petit. Whether you know someone in one of the cities under attack or not, everyone seems to be affected by today's terrorist attacks. People in Clarksburg turned to the one place they could sort out this tragedy.
Hundreds of miles away from the chaos, people search for peace. I grew up believing that church is a safe place to go to, to pray and to be closer to God and to be closer to people who feel the same way you do. Clarksburg's First Presbyterian Church opened its doors, Let us pray. offering a place of prayer for anyone who watched the events unfold. Shock, like everybody else, and then anger, you know, mad at the people who have done it. And then grief, you know, you cry for, for uh, even though you don't know them, for the victims and for their families. I, I can't imagine what they're going through right now. Lisa Williams, along with dozens of others, gathered to do the only thing they could to help during this national crisis. They all turned to God. I prayed for our president because he's going to have to make a lot of decisions. Um, I prayed for the people who have lost uh, loved ones and the amount of grief they'll have to bear. Um, and I just prayed for peace most of all. Peace that may not come without more bloodshed. Many say it's almost certain the United States will retaliate. It's an attack that most Americans feared but hoped would never happen. Now all they can do is lean on their faith to help them get through this. It actually is the first time today that I've felt a little bit of comfort and not so torn up inside. <laughs> Several other churches will hold prayer vigils this evening. Former WBOY anchor Matt McCarthy is in Washington, D.C., where he is a U.S. Marshal. He joins us now on the phone with what he saw today at the nation's capital. Matt, tell us, what did it look like out there today? Well, it was, it was a, a very a kind of spooky or eerie is the best way to say it. Um, we, I, was, I work at D.C. Superior Court, which is about a block over and a block up from the capitol. And uh, it just, it just was crazy. It just was cr crazy. They had jets flying around the Capitol for security after what happened at the Pentagon, and uh, it was just a, a very eerie scene, is the best way to say it. And uh, obviously, a lot of people there probably still in shock, still uh, very scared. Have you talked with many people today? What are they saying? Well. It, uh, you know, I think it's it's true all across uh, from what I've been hearing from the news reports and uh, from people I've talked to is just everyone is shocked and stunned. And uh, and I think it really hits close to home here in D.C. because there are so many federal buildings, federal workers, and, and it really becomes personal when you have an attack like this. Uh, and, and, and I think that's the biggest thing I noticed. I had a co-worker whose husband works over at the Pentagon and it took her about an hour, hour and a half before she was able to track him down, and he, he turned out to be okay. Apparently he was on the opposite side of the building. Uh, so it's, it's been a, a trying day for a lot of people here in uh, Washington, D.C. Definitely some scary moments, and I'm sure you will probably, being a U.S. Marshal, be involved in, in making some sense out of some of this chaos, at least. I know you're, you're involved with all of this. Yeah, exactly. We have different duties that... Uh, they shut down court, which is where I've been working, and and we're being scattered throughout the city for different uh, for different uh, duties at this point, and and I'm not even sure what they are. So as as they tell us where to go, that's where we go. All right, Matt. Well, thanks for joining us. We're awfully glad you're safe tonight. Thank you, Tiffany. Appreciate that. Community members come together to help victims and families as, and the nation as a whole. Uh, we have a list now of uh, some prayer vigils and also some special blood drives happening locally.
Well, the shock was just as visible around the Mountain State as it was in our nation's capital. Team 12's Denise Alex rejoins us in the newsroom with a recap of today's local reaction and aftermath. Denise? Well, David, I sat and stared at the television today like most people did throughout the morning, able to believe that the first attack could have been an accident. But when that second plane struck the World Trade Center, I and people I talked with today knew that that devastation would bring a whirlwind of disarray throughout the area. Work wasn't on the minds of people today. The assessor's office in all city county complexes closed around noon. Signs read closed until tomorrow due to today's devastation. Sheriff's deputies stayed on the clock protecting the community, but keeping a watchful eye on the day's unfolding tragedies. Streets were quiet. People checked on loved ones, hoping tomorrow will be a new day. Now, tomorrow will be a new day in a sense. Fairmont's city-county complex will reopen during normal business hours, so that will be good for, for people wanting to get there. Reporting in the newsroom, I'm Denise Alex for Team 12 News. Okay, thank you very much, Denise. Well, as dozens of government offices remain closed, those traveling by air will also see delays over the next few days. Team 12's Aru Pandey joins us again live from the Harrison Marion Regional Airport. Aru, what can air travelers expect? David, the Federal Aviation Administration says it probably won't be until noon tomorrow at the earliest before airplanes will be taking off from U.S. airports again. The FAA ordered a lockdown on all airspace after attacks in New York, Washington and Pennsylvania. It's the first time all air traffic in the United States has been suspended. The shutdown may be lifted around noon tomorrow at the earliest. Local police evacuated and secured this airport a little before 10 this morning as a precaution here at the Harrison Marion Regional Airport airport a lockdown remains in effect. Now fortunately there were no problems during the lockdown here. It's a procedure that's often tested but rarely used until today. Reporting live in Bridgeport, I'm Aru Pandey for Team 12 News. Okay, thank you very much Aru for that report and of course there are several closings to report in our area. Here's a list of what has come into the station today. Most of us, just like you at home, are shocked at what we've seen today. This certainly is a day we as Americans will never forget. Yeah, you're certainly right about that. And tonight, as authorities search for those responsible, most Americans will be searching for answers. Who would do this and why? And uh, right now, we're going to turn things back over to NBC News for their continuing coverage. We'll be back tonight at 11 with more.